Okay, so as we start this next unit, we're going to be moving into the actual fighting of the American Revolution. We've already talked a little bit about the first battles at Lexington and Concord, and now we're going to move into uh, sort of the rest of the Revolution, what took place after that, starting with what happens in and around the city of Boston shortly after Lexington and Concord. So, quick refresher, the fighting at Lexington and Concord in April of 1775 ended with 73 British soldiers dead and about 200 or so wounded. The colonists, the Minutemen, did lose some people, but they lost less than that. So the Minutemen, uh, I think, felt pretty good about that, that it showed that they could hang with the British, um, and uh, showed that they were not going to be just pushed over by the British Army. A lot of those British casualties, uh, dead and wounded, were actually after the battle. Um, so it wasn't in an open fight. It was rather as the troops were on their way back to Boston. You had colonists hiding behind walls and uh, fences and things like that. So it's a little bit misleading to think of this as like some big important colonial victory um, because they weren't fighting the British toe to toe. The colonists were able to save most of their weapons, right? Because that was the reason the British were going out to Concord was to try to steal the colonists' weapons. So the colonists were able to keep their weapons. And then after the battles, the British hunkered down in Boston and controlled the city itself, while the Minutemen, thousands of them, uh, controlled the areas surrounding Boston, sort of pinning the British in. There were rumors that the British were going to try to sort of break out of Boston uh, by seizing a hill called Bunker Hill, which overlooked the city. And so the Minutemen tried to keep that from happening, and they moved over to nearby Breed's Hill. And so here's a map. This is some of the land that uh, surrounded or overlooked the city of Boston. Um, and so... Up sort of at the, at the top left part up here, uh, it says Bunker's Hill. And then right here, sort of in the middle where you see all the dashed lines, is Breed's Hill. So the colonists took over Breed's Hill uh, to keep the British from kind of getting out and, and seizing the high ground. So the Battle of Bunker Hill, which again, improperly named really, it took place on Breed's Hill, uh, took place in June of 1775. The Americans had the high ground. The Minutemen had the high ground, which is very important in a battle. And they held their fire until the British were close by. Um, the famous command that the, com the, the Minuteman commander gave was, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. In other words, let them get close before you shoot because we need to use, you know, get the most out of our ammunition. And the Americans held their own. They beat the British back twice until they had to give up the hill because they were out of ammunition. Uh, so the British march up, they get knocked back down. They march up, they get knocked back down. And then they march up a third time, and at that point, the Minutemen ran out of ammo, and had to retreat. Shortly after the battle, uh, George Washington, who had been put in charge of the Continental Army, arrived to take control of the American forces. So Washington was not there for the battle. He came afterwards. That fall, a couple months later, uh, so a couple months go by where, where both sides are just kind of sitting around. Nothing's really happening. And that fall, the Americans made a bold move. They snuck up on Fort Ticonderoga in New York State, and they took control. They seized 60 big cannons. And in the wintertime, they brought them all the way back to Boston on ox-drawn sleds, which was a pretty 
long way to go over mountains in the cold snow and ice. The cannons finally arrived in March of 1776, and Washington uh, had them put on the hills overlooking Boston. I mean, realistically, pretty much right overnight, Washington took these cannons, put them on hills surrounding Boston, pointed them towards the British. So the British go to bed one night, everything is the same, they wake up the next morning and they're staring at 60 cannons. So that next day, uh, the British made a pretty wise decision to go ahead and get in their ships and leave town. To give you guys a sense here of how far we're talking about, you've got Boston and Massachusetts, Ticonderoga is the big red dot up here, and so that's a pretty long ways to get out there, you know, all the way across Massachusetts, New Hampshire and Vermont, uh, up into upstate New York. And then to not only get there, but take the cannons and then drag them all the way back to Boston was a pretty impressive feat. And it led to a big uh, victory for the colonists, which was getting the British to leave Boston.